Did you know the ATR, the pioneer in regional aviation, recently revealed its goals for the ATR EVO, the next generation of its most popular family of small aircraft by 2030? They claim that it's going to be their best-selling aircraft and greatest technical achievement to date. Well, what makes them so confident about the ATR EVO that just launched? What should we all know about it? Hello everyone, welcome back to Aviation News. In this exciting episode today, we'll introduce you to the next generation ATR EVO aircraft that just launched. To not miss any updates or videos from us, be sure to watch the video through the end and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon. Let's get started straight away, shall we? The board and shareholders of the Franco-Italian aircraft manufacturer, ATR, have given their approval for the company to study the viability of developing a next-generation turboprop that will have a double-digit lower operating and maintenance cost than the ATRs currently in production in a 20% reduction in fuel and CO2 emissions. The new variation is known as ATR EVO, which stands for Evolution or Evolve. It'll cover the full ATR family, including the short takeoff and landing specialist ATR-42S, the bigger ATR-72-600 and its freighter brother, the ATR-72F, and the smaller ATR-42, which can accommodate up to 50 people. The ATR EVO builds on the OEM's incremental development approach for its turboprop family, as its name suggests. The ATR-42 and 72 are their most popular selling aircraft in the market sector for aircraft with fewer than 90 seats making ATR the top global producer of regional aircraft. The firm made $1.6 billion US dollars in sales in 2019, helping people connect and grow responsibly no matter where they are on the globe as the company's 1,400 workers shared mission. ATR aircraft establish more than 100 new routes each year, use up to 40% less fuel, and emit up to 40% less carbon dioxide than regional jets because of the effectiveness of turboprop technology and the advantages of the company's focus on ongoing innovation. Around 200 businesses in 100 nations have selected ATR aircraft due to all of these factors. Airbus and Leonardo have a joint venture called ATR. Before its anticipated introduction to service somewhere in the year 2030, the aircraft's debut is anticipated for the following year. Like the ATR-72 and the ATR-42 types of the present, the ATR EVO will continue to be a twin-engine turboprop aircraft. Two will have a general design that's comparable to existing versions. To have a better grasp of the design of the ATR EVO, it is better to look at both the aircraft. A small airplane with a turboprop engine, the ATR-72 can carry up to 70 people. It is propelled by two Pratt & Whitney Canada PW100 turboprop engines, which power a configuration of four or six Hamilton standard propellers. To attain better hot and high takeoff performance, later built ATR-72 aircraft are powered by the newer PW-127 engine rated at a maximum of 2,750 shaft horsepower. Earlier variants of the ATR-72 are outfitted with the older PW-124B engine rated at 2,400 shaft horsepower. It is capable of landing and taking off at airports with elevated runways such as the airport of Andorra. It uses carbon fibers for 30% of the weight of the wing resulting in a 20% weight reduction. The aircraft doesn't have an auxiliary power unit by default. When one is fitted, it is in the C4 cargo area. The majority of the ATR-72 operators outfit their aircraft with a hotel mode propeller brake that stops the number two engine's propeller, allowing the turbine to continue operating and supplying the aircraft with both airflow and electrical power when it's stationary. In most configurations, the ATR-72's rear door is used for boarding passengers, which is unusual for a passenger aircraft. However, early consumer Finnair purposefully ordered its ATR-72s with a front passenger door so that it could use the jet bridges at Helsinki Airport, while operator Air New Zealand's standard rear door aircraft can use jet bridges at airports with a special configuration. As part of normal operating procedure, a tail is placed when passengers are boarding or deplaning the aircraft to prevent the nose of the aircraft from rising off the ground. The ATR-42, on the other hand, is a T-tailed twin turboprop straight high-wing aircraft that's certified in the transport category and powered by Pratt & Whitney Canada PW120 engines. It includes retractable landing gear and the icing boots to fly in icing situations. The wheel sides are visible while in flight. Since it has a propeller brake on the starboard engine, it may continue to operate the engine to produce power on the ground even if it lacks an auxiliary power unit or APU. With a pressurized cabin that has a circular cross-section and an interior width of 2.57 meters for four abreast seating, it can accommodate 48 passengers at 760 millimeter seat pitches. Its wingspan is 24.57 meters, giving it a wing aspect ratio of 11.1 and a 587 square foot wing area. 
Its 18,600 kg mTOW equates to a wing loading of 341 kg per square meter, with a fuel flow of 811 kg per hour, a fuel economy of 1.4 to 6 kg per kilometer per seat, with 4 to 8 seats and a jet fuel density of 0.8. It can travel at true speed of 300 knots at real airspeed. Returning to their latest release, the ATR Evo will continue to be a two-engine turboprop capable of using only sustainable aviation fuel or SAF. It'll have a new hybrid powertrain, as well as an eco design with revised propellers, an improved interior, and improved systems. According to ATR CEO Stefano Bortoli, the next generation of our aircraft will advance safe flying. The ATR Evo will pave the road for a decarbonized future for aviation when it joins the market. When fueled by kerosene, a 20% total fuel improvement means that the aircraft will produce nearly 50% less carbon dioxide than a regional jet. You know it. Its emissions will be almost negligible when using 100% SAF. ATR anticipates beginning the program the following year with a projected year service of 2030. According to Stephanie Viala, Senior Vice President of Engineering at ATR, the OEM with headquarters in Toulouse has sent information requests to the major engine producers for the development of an optimized power plant taking into account a hybridization with an electrical motor and a battery system. The aim, he explains, to enhance the ordinary thermodynamic engine with a second energy source, namely an electrical one. According to Viala, the aircraft will produce optimum performance and increase fuel economy throughout the various stages of flight since the electric motor will boost power during takeoff and ascent. Pratt & Whitney PW127M turboprop engines are currently used in the ATRs. The initiative by the ATR to equip its aircraft with brand new PW127XD turboprops beginning in the second half of this year is independent of the plan for the new engine. According to ATR, the XD for extended time in a wing provides a 20% maintenance cost reduction and a 3% fuel burn decrease compared to the PW127M. According to Viala, ATR's regional turboprop aircraft will gain some weight as a result of the electric engine and battery system. But engineers anticipate making up for the weight gain by either lowering weight in other places or slightly increasing the aircraft's maximum takeoff weight. In any event, we will maintain or perhaps slightly enhance the payload. We're looking at this important function, he remarked. To enhance the economic and environmental performance of its turboprops, ATR said last year that it has started looking at unusual propulsion possibilities, such as hydrogen. At the time, executives expressed concern that many ATR operators could find hydrogen-burning aircraft to be the best or most practical option. They insisted that the business would only integrate carbon dioxide emissions reducing technology that was available and economical. Despite an increase in third-party activities, employing hydrogen fuel cell-based propulsion for regional aircraft, the OEM is sticking by that justification. Many ATR operators have committed to installing hydrogen propulsion conversion kits in their current or prospective fleets of turboprop aircraft, including Iceland Air Group, Spain's Air Nostrum, Ireland's ASL Aviation Holdings, and Raven Alaska. ATR chose a mild level of hybridization, as Viala puts it, since it sees hydrogen as a longer-term alternative that will need extensive production and infrastructural changes. Fabrice Vautier, the company's commercial senior vice president, said that hybrid electric propulsion promises considerable improvement in the environmental and financial performance of the ATR aircraft family. According to Vautier, the technological options based on a new engine are examined in this feasibility study, but it also examines the worldwide commercial potential for this new aircraft. We're assessing how we might increase market share and broaden the appeal of our product to serve additional local communities, he shared. Airlines can operate narrow routes more profitably with double-digit operational cost reductions obtained through 20% reduced fuel burn and 20% overall maintenance cost reduction, he continued, and communities may gain from more connections, more needed services, and increased economic growth. According to Vautier, the firm aims to meet the demand for more environmentally friendly aircraft and more inexpensive travel. He said, we need to continue to reduce operational expenses while simultaneously achieving a significant improvement in environmental sustainability. The sustainability discussion is not as popular in many of our markets as it is in Europe. The cost per seat is a major driver in emerging economies. While environmental sustainability is an important subject in advanced areas like Europe, North America, Australia, and New Zealand, he told AIN. The two shareholders of the company, Airbus and Leonardo, fully backed the ATR Evo proposal, he insisted. As Vautier explained, the improvement of the airframer corresponds with the construction of the next generation model. ATR shipped 31 brand new aircraft in 2021 compared to 10 in 2020, and it expects to ship about 40 this year between 40 and 50 in 2023 and above 50 in 2024. We're currently ramping up. 
He said, we are approaching where we were before the crisis. According to Viala, the EVO will have several additional advancements to support the aircraft's performance, economy, and sustainability, even as the new hybrid electric powertrain takes center stage. The use of lighter biosource materials for the cabin, new propellers with the potential to go from six to eight plates, and a stronger emphasis on the recyclable and reusable nature of materials like carbon fiber are a few examples. So which of the aforementioned aircraft, in your opinion, has the most promise for sustainable air travel? And how would this new age ATR EVO aircraft turn out to be according to you? Tell us in the comments section below. That's all we got today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Aviation News. Your support will undoubtedly contribute to the channel's further growth. Thanks for watching.